Hi, I'm Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe's Video and Audio Tools, and I'm here to talk to you about some of the new features in Adobe Story. So the first thing you'll notice when you actually go to create a new document is that we have lots of new document types. So I'm going to navigate over to the New menu, and under Type, you'll see that we have all different types of scripts available to you, Film Script, TV Script, AV Script, Multi-Column Script. But the other important thing is that we actually have templates. So if I choose TV Script here, you'll notice we have this UK Screenplay template. I can click Create. We'll just leave it as an untitled. And again, this will bring me into the authoring panel here, where now I can begin customizing this. And again, using this as sort of a launching pad to begin my screenwriting or script writing process here. The cool thing about templates is you can actually create your own, modify your own, and make them your own and reuse them over time. So very cool, very effective, and a great way to work inside Story. Again, if you just look at some of the standard script types here, here's a regular film script, and here's the multi-column script. And if I just scroll down, you'll see that what's cool about this is this allows me to add images. I can then have some some audio or some directions for audio with narration, and it's just another fun way to work inside of Adobe Story. Now, Adobe Story is unique in that it integrates scheduling and scripting so you don't have to transfer data between programs. And that really speaks to the power of leveraging metadata. You've heard me talk a lot about metadata. Now, a schedule can be generated directly from a script, and when a script is revised, you can synchronize these changes, even review the changes before you sync them to the schedule so that you can gauge the impact of each revision. So let's actually take a look at that. So here we have my Fearless at 500 script. I'm going to go back to the Projects panel here, and I want to create a schedule based on all the information and metadata from from that script. So once again, I'll go up to the New button here. And in this case, we're going to choose Schedule. I'll give this a name. We'll call this Fearless Schedule 02. Click Create. And now we're presented with this new dialog, because now I can direct Story to the actual script, and we can even choose scenes that we want to appear in the schedule. All Projects, Hot Wheels, Fearless at the 500. Takes a second to show me all the scenes. I can select all of my scenes here, click OK, and literally in a matter of seconds, it's going to pull all the information from that script and deliver the schedule for me. Now, even cooler is that you have all different types of sorting options once you've built the schedule. So if I come over here to Sort, I can say, let's go ahead and sort it by Set. Let's go ahead and add that, click OK. And now you'll see that all the different set locations are actually color-coded and organized very easily, very cool, very simple. We can even add things like breaks, day breaks. And we talked about this in the overview that you may have seen on adobe.com. So let me go ahead and click in this field here. I'm going to choose Add Break, Day Break, and there it is. It's just so simple. So going beyond just having the schedule, what happens if we make a change to the script? We obviously want those changes reflected in the schedule. Well, that's, again, some of the powerful features in Adobe Story. We now allow you to synchronize the two. So let's go back to the Fearless at 500 script and actually make some changes to this and then synchronize that with the schedule. So here we are inside Scene 3, and I'm actually going to add a new character. So I'm going to hit Return. Let's go into Character here. We're going to create an entirely new character. Now, again, with the auto formatting and recognition of existing characters, if I were to type something like S, it's going to show me we have a character named Spitz and a character named Steel. I'm going to make a new one, and we'll call this one Stephanie. And Stephanie's going to say, well, let's hear about it. Some very simple dialog changes. And then I'm simply going to click Save Now. Now, that has just changed the script. The cool part is in the synchronization with the schedule. So now when I click back to my schedule, I can go up to the Sync button here. Now you'll see I didn't add any scenes, I didn't delete any scenes, but we actually changed a scene, Scene 3. And if we hover over this, this will tell us that we actually added a new character, and it'll even show the running time duration. Go ahead and click OK on that. And now, when I hover over Scene 3, you can see that character Stephanie has been added. With this powerful sync feature, it's easy to keep the schedule consistent with the script and keep a watchful eye on the changes that are happening. Now, with the new Properties panel, you have the ability to visually break down the elements of each scene, whether you're viewing the actual shooting schedule or the script itself. So here in the schedule, if I simply enable the Strip Properties panel, you can actually see how it breaks down all the scene elements, characters, notes, locations, all in a way that just, well, it makes sense. So let's take a look at that. We'll go over to the View menu here, Strip Properties panel. And as I click on a particular scene, oh, now you can see it. So here we are in Scene 3. It shows the characters, any synopsis notes, the act, etc. And again, this just makes it really easy to see at a glance exactly what's happening in this scene. We can also use these little triangles here 
to navigate or move between scenes, and that's just viewing it from the schedule. Now, if I switch over to the actual script, here it's actually referred to as the Scene Properties panel. Now again, same information, but what's even cooler is I can actually click inside the script and instantly see all the relevant information, even speaking and non-speaking characters present in the scene. So let's go ahead and twirl this one down here, and again, this shows you actual speaking characters. Stephanie is among them, our new character that we just added. We don't have any non-speaking characters. In short, it's just concise visual feedback of all the elements you need to make the shoot go more smoothly. Now, a great new addition to Adobe Story Plus is the ability to share and collaborate on your works. But more importantly, you now have the ability to share not only individual scripts, but entire projects, which can contain multiple script types, schedules, reports, bios, virtually anything. So you even have the ability to set sharing permissions for each viewer or designated recipient. So let's take a look at setting that up. So when we're inside the script here, and I can go from the file menu and choose share. And again, I can type in a name here. So we'll call this Paul T. And we have the different permissions here. He can be a reader or viewer or a co-author. And I can also send email in, uh, notifications if I so desire, and I have the ability to send a note here. Now that's sharing an individual document, but what if I want to share all the documents that make up this entire project? Well, I can go back over to the projects panel here, and now I can go into share, and you'll see that it says click to share the project. It actually lists out the Hot Wheels project. Once again, I can add an email address here. I can set my permissions, co-author, reviewer, or simply a reader. Go ahead and add it, send email notifications if I so desire, click OK, and it immediately sends that out. So a lot of flexibility now with not only sharing scripts, but all of the elements of your projects directly from within Story. Now the last thing I wanted to show you were some of the export options. And naturally we have a tie-in directly with Premiere Pro CS6 so that you can actually import your Adobe Story script. So from within Adobe Story, if I go into my authoring panel here, I can go to the file menu and choose export as, and you can see all of the different file types, including standards like Final Draft, you can see text documents, you can make Excel docs. But of course, for us, we're going to choose the Adobe Story Interchange format. Why? Because directly from within Premiere Pro, we can import that ASTX file and again, tie that metadata directly to the video itself, which again, just gives you a lot more flexibility in editing, in post-production, and just makes the whole process a lot easier. And it gives you effectively smart clips, clips that have information about your story already there. So Adobe Story truly gives you the tools you need to outline, plan, script, and schedule your projects, collaborate efficiently, and even leverage your script's metadata during the editing process, truly enabling you to tell your story from pre-production all the way to post.